Welcome to the Fundamentals of Generative AI and Prompt Engineering course. This four-part training series is thoughtfully designed to provide you with an understanding of generative AI, equip you with essential skills in prompt engineering, and guide you on the responsible use of generative AI. But before we begin, let's hear a few words from Mr. Paul Neo, Chief Operating Officer and Chief Financial Officer of the Singapore Academy of Law. Greetings, learned friend. As a scientific field, artificial intelligence has been around for almost 80 years. But for many of us, its impact was mostly confined to our imagination of AI's capabilities fueled by movies like The Terminator and iRobot. Well, these days, we no longer need to imagine as much about what AI can do. Advancements in natural language processing, computing power, and large language models based on deep learning have converged to enable development of generative pre-trained algorithms, or Gen AI. And unlike previous milestones of AI development, Gen AI is accessible in an unprecedented way, with free tools like Microsoft's Copilot literally putting the power of Gen AI at our lawyers' fingertips. Additionally, the language-centric nature of law means that legal work lends itself readily to AI augmentation. But even ready access to such a powerful tool would be of limited benefit if we do not know how to unlock its full potential. This is why the Singapore Academy of Law and Microsoft have collaborated to bring our lawyers the world's first prompt engineering guide and training video for legal professionals. With the aid of this guide and training video, we hope you will learn how to formulate more precise and contextually appropriate queries or instructions to Gen AI models in order to better harness the transformational capabilities of Gen AI. Happy prompting! In this module, we will cover the basics of generative AI with the aim of understanding its fundamental concepts and potential applications. Gen AI is short for Generative Artificial Intelligence. Artificial intelligence refers to a branch of computer science focused on creating systems capable of performing tasks like learning, reasoning, problem solving, which typically require human intelligence. Generative artificial intelligence can be distinguished from other AI technologies because of its ability to create new and unique content, such as text, images, music, videos, audios, even software code, in response to user prompts. It's actually not a new concept, and we've all used a version of it. As an example would be the predictive text on your phone messaging app or when you're searching in Bing or Google. Then in November 2022, OpenAI released an early demo of ChatGPT, and it went viral, reaching 1 million users in 5 days and 100 million users in just 2 months. So why is this new generation of generative AI so popular? It is powerful and versatile, capable of handling multiple tasks from answering questions and writing essays to creating poetry and stories. The interface is super easy to use. Just type and go. Plus, it generates responses that feel like you're chatting with a real person, making interactions more natural and engaging. At the core of generative AI are large language models. These models are what power the capabilities of generative AI. So how do large language models work? Let's use an analogy. Imagine that you are trying to learn a new language, such as French. How would you do that? One way would be to read a lot of French books, articles, and websites, and to try and understand the meaning and the grammar of the language. You would also try to memorize the vocabulary and the spelling of the words. You would also try to practice the language by writing or speaking it and getting feedback from native speakers or teachers. Large language models do something similar, but on a much bigger scale. LLMs are deep learning models that understand and generate text that mirrors natural language. They are called large because they are trained on massive amounts of text data, such as books, articles, websites, social media posts, and so on. 
They are also called language models because they learn the structure and patterns of language, such as how words, sentences, and paragraphs are formed and connected. Large language models can generate natural language in various ways, depending on the task and the input. For example, they can complete a sentence given a few words as a prompt, answer a question given some context or background information. They can write a summary given a longer text as a source. They can even write a story given a genre or a theme. Do take note though, the generative AI systems and tools are only as good as the data they are trained on and used to perform tasks. If training or grounding data are inaccurate, output data may be too. This is why human oversight will be critical to review the quality and accuracy of AI-generated content. Now you may be wondering why generative AI is relevant to you. Gen AI offers an unprecedented opportunity to advance innovation in the legal profession. Goldman Sachs estimates that 44% of legal work stands to be automated by generative AI. By automating routine work, generative AI allows lawyers to focus on higher value work, offering strategic guidance to building trusted client relationships, where critical thinking, commercial acumen, empathy and experience, and a holistic understanding of the needs of clients come into play. Generative AI has a great potential to be a co-pilot, to augment and complement and not replace a lawyer's work. Generative AI gives us the power to explore a whole new world of possibilities, and prompts we use are keys to opening those doors. In this module, we will explore basic concepts of prompt engineering and how it can enable you to craft instructions so you can get more accurate and pertinent results. So what is a prompt? A prompt is essentially the text input or instructions given to an AI model to generate a response. Prompt engineering is a process of designing and optimizing the prompt until the response from the generative AI is able to meet the user's expectations for relevance and quality. Prompt engineering is an important skill to learn. Why? Remember, you're talking to a machine. Generative AI doesn't understand human language context the way we do. Clear and precise prompts helps the AI understand exactly what you need leading to more accurate and relevant responses. Well-crafted prompts ensure more predictable and reliable outputs by reducing randomness in the AI's responses. Clear prompts also save you time as you are able to get the desired outcome or information with fewer attempts. So what constitutes a good prompt? A good prompt will provide a clear description of the task, explain the role the AI tool needs to play, Describe the audience, provide guidance on the tone, style, and length of the expected output, as well as any additional context to be taken into account. An iterative process will help to refine the result. Now let's break down these elements one by one. Begin with the end in mind. What do you want the AI model to do for you? The sequence that information appears in the prompt matters due to the way that most AI models are built. Start with clear instructions to the generative AI model by laying out our goal. Telling the model the task you wanted to do at the beginning of the prompt before sharing additional contextual information or examples can help produce higher quality outputs. Including the context of the instruction helps the model better understand the overall contours of what it should aim to achieve. Why do you need it? Who is involved? Give any context or relevant details about what outcome you're working toward. Is it for a client meeting or an internal presentation? Whatever your objective is, you should let the Gen AI model know. You should also state your expectations for how the Gen AI tool should deliver its response. How do you want the output to be presented to you? Do you want the output to be in a list, in a bulleted form, or maybe you want it in a table? You can also set an expectation for a word limit, which is particularly useful for brief summaries. What audience is it aimed at? What kind of tone are you thinking for this assignment? 
Do you want it friendly, casual, or maybe serious or formal? It would also be useful to include a reference source. This could either be an internal document or external website. Doing this helps narrow the focus of the model, which tends to rely on its broad-based training data. This would allow the model to provide you more targeted information suited to your needs. As a reminder, do also ensure that data being shared with a language model complies with your organization's data privacy and security policies. Now that we have learned the basics, let's give it a try using this simple prompt. Not quite the output I was expecting, but that's okay. The initial ask is just a starting point. Working with AI is an interactive and iterative process. Don't be discouraged if you need to continuously refine your prompt to get to the output you want. And one more thing. You are responsible for your work product, even when you are using generative AI. Generative AI will not be fully accurate. Remember what you learned in the first year of law school. Do not rely on authority that you have not read. Review and verify generated output before incorporating them into your work product. Generative AI models are highly responsive to the prompts we give them, making prompt engineering an important skill to develop. Like any skill, practice makes perfect. Think of it as an art form. Your creativity and intuition will guide you to craft successful prompts. There are various ways in which properly crafted prompts can boost your productivity and creativity as a lawyer. So keep practicing and learning, and you'll master it in no time. Understanding of generative AI technology, including its capabilities, limitations, and potential risks is necessary. In this module, let us listen to Mr. Gopalan, a consultant for ethics and professional standards at the Singapore Academy of Law, as he talks about using generative AI responsibly. The use of Gen AI does not relieve a lawyer of his ethical obligations. It is important to appreciate two important ethical obligations, namely the duty to provide competent representation and advice, and secondly, the duty to maintain confidentiality. The duty to provide competent representation and advice is contained in Rule 5 of the Professional Conduct Rules. A lawyer has a duty to be diligent in the advice and information given to his client and in the manner the lawyer represents the client. Competent handling of any matter includes appreciating the factual and legal issues involved. It requires adequate preparation. To demonstrate the requisite knowledge and skill, a lawyer needs to keep abreast of changes in the law and its practice, including the benefits and risks associated with relevant technology. Using Gen AI can help lawyers provide competent and diligent representation of their client. Gen AI can do much of the routine work, leaving the lawyer time to check and improve on the output from Gen AI. However, Gen AI is a tool and cannot be relied on as a solution for diligence. Lawyers must still check the output from Gen AI for correctness. Your legal knowledge is still a key requirement. The second duty to maintain confidentiality is contained in Rule 6 of the Professional Conduct Rules. A lawyer has a duty to act in the best interest of his client. He has a responsibility to maintain the confidentiality of any information which he acquires in the course of his work. To create an output, Gen AI requires information. This information is usually from client documents which are uploaded into the system. It is good practice to provide informed advice before you see used client information and obtain clients' informed consent for the use of the information. Clients should be advised on the potential benefits and risks associated with using Gen AI technologies, such as efficiency gains and cost reductions, but also risks related to bias, data privacy, and security. If any extra costs are entailed, 
the client should be advised of those extra costs. To be able to provide such information to the client, the lawyer must have a general understanding of how the Gen AI system works. The security systems, who will have access to the information uploaded, and what to do if there is a data breach. Then only can the lawyer work out how to maintain confidentiality. It is important to appreciate that a lawyer must exercise independent professional judgment. The exercise of independent judgment means the lawyer must look at the work product just like you would do with a junior associate's work. You cannot assume that the output from Gen AI is correct. In this last module, we spoke with Carol Lee, Senior Corporate Counsel from the Compliance and Ethics team in Microsoft, to learn about her experiences in using generative AI at work. Do you use any generative AI tools? I use Gen AI products um, like Copilot in Bing, uh, Word Copilot, and my favorite, PowerPoint Copilot in my day-to-day -day life. How have they helped you? The Gen AI tools have been instrumental in saving an enormous amount of effort and time for myself. Right, um, I've cut down time in using, uh, in in developing reports, reading documents, um, creating summaries, uh, creating summaries of meetings, um, and typing minutes of meetings. Um, th this has really saved uh, a lot of effort and given me the resources now to read broadly, um, also spend more time with my family, and uh, prioritize upskilling in areas of interest. What was your initial experience like? It has been a bumpy journey, and it wasn't easy at the beginning. It has taken months of, of practice to perfect the art of creating good prompts to achieve the right output of Copilot. There has been a lot of trial and error on my part, um, sometimes a lot more error than, than um, during the trials, and I've also overcome the initial reticence of adopting new technology. But the more I use the Gen AI products and the more I read up on the Gen AI products, the more confidence I have in using the Microsoft products. What were your initial doubts and concerns? I was just used to working in a particular way. For 25 years, spending hours and hours reading documents and writing reports, um, summarizing articles um, and reading case, case studies, case law, um, has been an integral part of my work life. And I've, I thought that I had achieved mastery in my work already and I really didn't need changing. Um, but when I look, started using the Gen AI products, um, it, it really changed my life. Initially, when Gen AI products started popping up on my social media and uh, on my messaging systems, I got a little bit worried, right? Is my data privacy, um, my data being protected? Um, is, is somebody else reading my, um, my messages? Um, and I, I had many concerns about using Gen AI products like most people. How did you overcome these initial doubts? Knowing and understanding the responsible AI principles and being able to coach and train others about it has been instrument instrumental in helping me overcome my initial skepticism and fears. Our AI advocacy leads also have been helping us to and educating Sila in using the products as well as in, in understanding the technology behind it. Um, so that we can use it more effectively. Can you share how you use the Gen AI tools? So if you take a look at the um, a standard Microsoft agreement, which could be uh, about 22, 20 pages long, um, you might want to use it to summarize uh, the key terms that you want Microsoft uh, to clarify on. Let's pretend that I'm a legal counsel in the partner uh, and in a partner organization, and I'm reviewing the Microsoft Partner Agreement for the first time. I find Word Copilot most useful here. For example, I have asked Copilot to summarize key points for negotiation into a table. I can then isolate this and then request Copilot to give me five points of clarification with Microsoft. 
there may be key issues for me as a partner. For example, I may be concerned about hmm, the Data Protection Act. And I also need to understand Microsoft's position with regards to data protection. This can be easily done by using Copilot to search and summarize those relevant terms within the document and from external sources and links. I can then move the table and all the information and collate it into an email. With this, I will start using Copilot in Outlook to draft an email to my management seeking to explain the, the agreement and the legal pros and cons of signing the same. It's always a challenge to have all of these ideas and creativity in our heads and have a blank PowerPoint. I find Copilot for um, essential in preparing uh, um, a PowerPoint deck using information stored in my local drive, using simple prompts, including topic, audience, and the potential sources of information, and to create an initial workable draft with design ideas which I can then review and edit to ensure that it reflects me, the presenter. What used to take me days to prepare now only takes a few hours, and then I can use the time wisely and to, to focus on the delivery of the presentation to effectively bring the right message across. What learnings can you share based on your own experiences? Ultimately, Copilot is an assistive tool. You are still the hero of your own adventure, and you must choose wisely and know that every product um, comes along with its risks and, um, and understand what measures that the tech company producing the product has taken to mitigate these risks. It is still your own adventure and you are accountable and responsible to check the facts um, that have been churned out by the Gen AI tools. Depending on the situation, you might also want to ensure that you cite the sources of information that you have retrieved the Gen AI output from. You should also learn how to create new good prompts um, to give clear instructions to the Gen AI tools that they are using so that it can produce the desired accurate output. And that concludes our four part training series. It's been a real pleasure taking you through this learning journey. We hope that this series has provided you with an understanding of generative AI, essential skills in prompt engineering for lawyers, and the importance of responsible AI use.